Hello there, it's Keith Fitzgerald, Chief Investment Strategist for Money Map Press, and today sitting in is guest host on the Money Show Network. I am with, of course, a man who needs no introduction, and I'm not doing my best to impersonate a boxing announcer, Mr. Steve Forbes, longtime teacher of mine, hero of mine, and obviously free-spirited, free-thinking, brilliant thinker, out with a new book that uh, he's brought with him today, Money, and most importantly, there's a new public television special that you need to watch based on this book. Welcome, yeah. Steve. Good to be with you, Keith. Thank you, and uh, thank you for mentioning the book and uh, the documentary. The documentary is called In Money We Trust. In Money We Trust. Trust. Now, yeah. obviously, you didn't choose those words lightly, Steve. No, and uh, the documentary is uh, has a question mark on it, In Money We Trust question mark, but you can find it online in Money We Trust, no question mark, in moneywetrust.org, in moneywetrust.org. Go to that website, moneytrust.org, and press the button, and you can watch the show right, right there. Fair enough. Now, trust is a word that obviously has lots of loaded connotations in today's environment, but you're obviously a proponent of it, so make your case. Well, uh, money works best when it has a stable value, like uh, uh, clocks work best when you have 60 minutes in an hour. That doesn't float or fluctuate each day. Right. And uh, the size of a gallon of gasoline doesn't change each day. A kilometer doesn't change. A kilogram doesn't change. They stay the same. Fixed weights and measures. Money is simply a means of uh, doing transactions with each other. So if I want to buy uh, five loaves of bread and you want a bottle of my wine, you take the bottle, I take the five loaves of bread. Uh, if money's unstable, I may end up with uh, either uh, four loaves or six loaves. So I get an unwarranted gain or an unwarranted loss. Not fair. And even if you have slow motion, uh, instability in money, it undermines social trust. You know, that's the interesting part, too, because people don't understand the link between financial trust and social trust. Yes, absolutely, because how do we deal with most strangers? Through the medium of money. Absolutely. Well, I don't have to know you. To, if uh, you have something I want to buy and I have uh, the money, we, we, we can do a transaction. And uh, whereas in old societies with barter, I don't know, is this somebody I can trust? Is he going to uh, give me a dollar? And you, uh, you see technology doing it all the time. Small businesses, eBay, PayPal comes along, makes it easy to uh, be able to do payment systems. Well, and speaking of which, you know, you spoke just a few minutes ago here in the hallway, which I believe many of you online saw, but you made the case in the medical community, the emergence of, or the lack specifically of free market economics has hindered right. the development of otherwise free exchange of information, which of course leads to social trust and financial trust. Yes, uh, in uh, medicine, nobody designed the system we have today, came out of World War II and tax decisions and all that kind of thing, yep. but uh, it's a third party, so there's a disconnect between the doctor and, and you. Uh, the doctor has to uh, appeal to uh, insurance companies oh. or, to, or, 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 or to the government, yep. and uh, there's no reward for being uh, efficient, no reward for coming up with uh, better ways of uh, doing things, like an MRI. In a normal market today, that would cost about uh, $49.95. <laughs> But, but but there's no incentive to do it. And worse, it's a third-party state secret between the insurance company and the provider, and the patient never knows. Yeah, and uh, but that's beginning to change, and it's beginning to change because of two factors. One, thank you, Barack Obama, yep. your exchanges and those high deductibles. Yes, uh, people get uh, uh, subsidies for them, but it's still they realize, oh my God, that's a big big uh, big nut I have to crack. And then companies, because of rising expenses, are uh, going more and more to high deductibles policies. Absolutely. And uh, the, the good companies put in uh, medical savings accounts, health savings accounts to help cover that where you're, con but again, HSAs, uh, you control the money. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so uh, we're, we're, we're going to see big breakthroughs in health care. That's one reason why you should be optimistic about the future. Imagine turning what looks like a hopeless liability into one of the most dynamic industries ever because health is the most personal thing ever. Well, you know, you just touched on the very subject that I wanted to go to. You know, uh, you've been known for I'm years. I'm a mind reader, too. <laughs> you are a mind reader. <laughs> I wish. As long as I've had the privilege of knowing you and the, the honor of your friendship, you've always struck me as an optimist. Yes. Today, many people in this country are struck by an overwhelming sense of pessimism. How do you make the case through something like this that optimism still matters? Uh, because uh, you make the case 
why are we in this situation? Why isn't the uh, auto moving the way it should? And uh, as we did in the uh, early 80s, we got rid of a lot of these barriers, the inflation, uh, deregulation, big tax cuts, and by golly, the economy boom. And when people who lived in the 80s look back, they look back with nostalgia. Yes. A time of optimism, great culture, great music, things moving ahead. I actually had but hair back then, Steve. I, 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 I did too. And uh, <laughs> I, I won't blame Madam Barack Obama losing my hair. But, uh, there you go, exactly. But, uh, but uh, it, it was a great time. And uh, we can have that again. And I think uh, we're starting to see the changes again. As more and more information comes out about why do we have these uh, laws that prescribe how we do things? Mm -hmm. Laws aren't supposed to be instruction manuals. Yeah. You're supposed to say, here's the goal. You figure out how to achieve the goal. And if you don't, you pay a price for it. Do you think Wall Street's out of control, as a lot of people allege lately? Uh, Wall Street is Wall Street. And uh, when bad things happen, it usually uh, has their genesis, and I underline the word uh, origins, in uh, government misbehavior. Yes. In, in the uh, crisis of belief. 2008. Yep. Who weakened the dollar? That wasn't Wall Street. That was Washington. Absolutely. Which uh, led to the distortions in the commodities market, the housing market. Free markets always get the blame when the government messes up. But uh, to say it was Wall Street greed, is saying it was greed is like saying gravity causes airplane crashes. <laughs> Well, yes, Makes, but it, uh, it right, doesn't but take not you for very the reasons yeah. you think. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Anyway, you know, folks, that's the legendary Steve Forbes at work. Great thing. I encourage you to get the book, watch the special, enjoy it, learn, and trust socially, trust financially. Steve, thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Me. My Good pleasure. to be with you, Keith. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. We'll see you next time. I'm Keith Fitzgerald signing off here at the Money Show in Seattle.